We are joined by John McAfee. And he's going to launch a big new privacy push here today. We're very excited about that. Who is McAfee.com? Uh, FutureTentCentral.com. And we'll talk some about his new platform and program, but I want to pick his brain. You know, he gets demonized in the media because he's an eccentric fella. Uh, sold his company for hundreds of millions of dollars. Moved down to Belize. Said that he was run out of the country by terrorists. That people connected to Islamists turned out after a year after he left. That did come out in the mainstream news. He successfully evaded. Uh, the authorities got into Guatemala. Uh, I've talked to people that still think he's in jail or something. He never was. Uh, he was able to hack into the government computers, record them involved in this stuff. And he's quite the survivor, quite the adventurer. And uh, John McAfee joins us here on the Global Transmission. John, you heard me just get into the preparation for the collapse in Utah and Texas, targeted for Northcom takeover by Southcom. Uh, what do you make of all this? You know, I, I think I think the world is going to hell in the handbasket uh, um, in in a number of ways, Alex. The uh, uh, the problem stems from a, a removal of our basic freedoms, our liberties, our privacies. We we have um, uh, you know we have people telling us how to think, what to say, uh, what to believe. Uh, we have people watching what we say. We have people watching what we do. Uh, pretty soon we'll have people watching what we think. Um, it, it's it's uh, it's a tragic state of affairs, and and uh, nothing nothing in the news that I've seen in the past month has elevated me. It has all depressed me. Well, I agree with you, and we've got open NSA spying illegally. We've got Congress openly being blackmailed. We've got the borders ordered completely wide open uh, outside of law. I mean, we have become a tyranny. My only question is, where are we going next? I think the bottom has fallen out. So now, how deep is this chasm? I, I, th I think that the chasm is far deeper than we thought. Uh, if you remember, one year ago, almost to the day, I was on your, on your show, railing about a company Casual. called Harris Corporation and a device that they had created called a Stingray and how they had created a contract that would not allow the purchaser of one of these devices to divulge to anyone that they owned it. In other words, you could not divulge the name of the device, the Stingray. name of the device, anything. And I'm going, this is insane. It's utterly insane. The reason for it, of course, is Harris Corp does not want the world to know how many of these devices are out there because I'm afraid it's in the millions. And these devices are used ostensibly to catch terrorists or criminals uh, doing nefarious things. On Private the investigators without warrants sit there and listen to your phone calls, everything. It's unbelievable. But the problem, here's the problem, Alex, it's not just listening to the phone call of the, of the target, it's listening to everybody's phone call within a quarter mile radius of where this device is located, because they're all connecting up to you. Now, the, the police and, and the, the FBI and the authorities say, oh, we're, not, we're not caring about that, we're filtering out all of that. Well, how do you filter it out unless you listen to it? Think about it. I mean, you're, you're looking for one conversation among... And let's remember, just six months ago when you and others were beating the drum and we were beating the drum to expose it, we exposed other big secret networks, became national news in Seattle and other areas the Homeland Security was putting in, you know, not just local police. They came out and said, those aren't ours. We don't know whose they are. They lied to the public. The FBI did. So, so there's also that. I mean, this is illegal. Of course it's illegal. I think the contract itself is illegal because... It violates our freedom of access to public information. And we have we have a law passed by Congress that gives us the right to find out what the hell our government is doing, our local government, our state government. And now Obama announced three days ago they will no longer honor FOIA requests. Period at the White House outside of law. So so is it a bottomless uh, chasm? I mean, how deep is it? Well, I think I think it's it's it shows some some degree of indifference or stupidity on the part of the average American. Now, Alex, listen. Here's here's how it finally came to light. Now, I came. I talked about it two years ago and said this is going to be a problem. This is insane. It has to be addressed and looked at. So finally, it it, it takes it takes something dramatic for anyone to ever take notice. The sheriff of Santa Clara County, a, a woman. Uh, put in uh, for a request for a half a million dollars for these machines that were able to tap 
telephones of bad people. So uh, the, the, this is the first time that they they had done a referendum to get public money without the warrant for this. So the public started asking questions like, well, "What is it?" Oh, we can't tell you what it is. Well, what does it do? We can't tell you what it does. Can we see a demonstration? No, you can't. Can you tell us the name of the product? No, we cannot. Tell you tell us, can you tell us who made it? No, we can't. Do you see the insanity? This is actually happening in America in Santa Clara, California, as we speak, and probably in thousands of other cities across this country. Because all the police, all the FBI, all of the agencies, they want these Stingray devices because they allow you to listen to anyone's telephone conversations and to plant software in those telephones that will monitor your every word, view everything that you do while you're showering, while you're in the bathroom. Get your while codes. I'm sorry? Get your other passcodes and imagine this is all being done illegally without a warrant, just in our face. That's correct. That, that, that's absolutely correct. Judges do not even understand what, what they say when we're going to use our, our, our unnameable device to, uh, to, 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 to listen to this man's conversation. What it really does is it listens to everyone's conversation within the pickup radius of that mobile device. It intercepts it and descrambles it. It steals it. And then someone is listening to your conversation. Well, I tell you man, what, stay there. Your Skype's breaking up a bit. John McAvee is our guest. Who is McAvee.com, futuretentcentral.com. He's got a way to counter this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a criminal revolution against society. We'll also look at a Forbes investigation of the DEA and their criminal activities. Racism. Charlie Sheen put out a tweet saying, why was Obama cutting funding to veterans groups? He called him Barry Kenyon Sitaro, you know, pointing out that he might have been born in Kenya. And um, Newsweek, you name it, called him racist. But Obama made the same joke the week before at a press dinner saying, well, I'm from Kenya and I moved here because I love America so much. So, again, they know it's not racist. It's their political weapon to bully people into submission. And while all of our rights are being stolen, while we're being signed on to tens of trillions more in fake derivatives of foreign banks, while our basic freedoms are being dismantled, they're obsessing on race. I want to get into your ways of countering this in the next longer segment, John McAvee, who joins us from whoismcavee.com. But what do you make of the obsessing on race suddenly and George Soros caught funding 30 plus million dollars to stir up demonstrations against the police? I mean, I know we're both against the police being organs of tyranny, but we, I mean, I know I understand they're trying to cause balkanization. What do you think's going on here? Well, as you, as you know, uh, uh, Alex, my wife is, is black. Um, and I am extremely familiar with all of the uh, um, the racial issues involved with uh, with both white, black people, and and, and others. Um, you know, I, I think I think we are beyond needing the government to be involved in 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 our opinions and attitudes toward race. Just like we we do not need the government involved in in our opinions and attitude toward church, uh, belief, uh, political affiliation. Uh, uh, spiritual aspirations or anything else. Exactly. Uh, so, so this is the fundamental problem. The the, the government here's the it, the real problem is this: the government wants to be our parents, our father, yep. or our mother. They want they want to take care of us like you would take care of a wayward child. Homeland Security promised us after nine eleven we would be secure. All we had to do was give up a whole bunch of freedoms, and we would be secure. People bought into that. How secure are we? Far less now than we were before. And we have given up a great deal of, of freedom and a great deal of privacy for this illusion of security. There is no such thing as security, and at least not provided by the government. How can they provide security for me? If a burglar breaks into my house, is there a magic button that I can push that will make the police materialize instantly between myself and the, and the burglar? No. The police do not prevent crimes. They are there after the fact 
to help solve the crime. And then they don't know who's who when they come into a situation and make a lot of mistakes. We're not even blaming them. It's just that they're not even a panacea when there is a cop there. Well, I, I, I just don't think that anybody can take responsibility for your own security other than yourself, Alex. You have to, you have to, you, when, when you buy a house, do you call the Department of the Interior and say, please install my locks? No, that's your job. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you call the government and say, give me free insurance, but that's the mindset they're selling. Well, of course, because that, that buys votes, does it? I mean, think about it. You you have someone saying, "We're going to give you everything. We're going to protect you. We're going to we're going to make, keep you safe. We're going to keep you healthy. Uh, all you got to do is is give up control to us because we know better." You're a famous engineer, a famous entrepreneur, a famous programmer. Worked in NASA and secret programs. You've been around the block. Uh, you had that famous escape from a, a Belize. Were vindicated there that they were involved in serious uh, op criminal operations. Clearly, where do you see it all going? I mean, do you have hope for humanity? Where do you see it all ending? I, I think the first thing, Alex, is we have to take responsibility for our own actions, our own thoughts, our own feelings. This is not happening in America anymore. What we want is other people. Our boss, our landlord, our wife, our, our, our spouse, the state, the, the county, the city, the federal government to take care of us and make our decisions for us. This is the tragedy that, that exists today. Uh, this cannot continue. You cannot live a free, uh, meaningful existence if you abdicate responsibility for yourself. And we have done that. We've done that because we're lazy. We, we, have our, we have our smartphones here. We all have one because they make life easier. They make, they make access to our friends extremely quick, simple. We, don't, we no longer have to remember telephone numbers. They, uh, they have access to the internet. They make life so easy that we have become lazy. And with that, we lose our humanity and our IQ and everything else. John McAvee, who is McAvee.com, excellent website, future10central.com. We're going to tell you about something he's developed that's revolutionary, very exciting to counter all this spying. And it's stuff like this that is really going to put a fly in the ointment of Big Brother. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. Follow us on Twitter, Real Alex Jones. We're on the march. And I'm sick of it, and the New World Order will fall. Up on DrudgeReport.com, look at these headlines. <clears throat> Federal workers told to, I mean, this is so incredible, probe their unconscious bias. Now we're looking for unconscious bias. Unconscious bias. Not the conscious megabanks raping the country, more derivatives. They've just announced more banker bailouts coming. No, no, no. We're just all supposed to start fighting with each other and divide and conquer. John McAfee is our guest. When he leaves us here in about uh, 10 minutes or so, we are going to play a special report by Leanne McAdoo where the vast majority of South by Southwest ding-dongs, uh, dum-dums, uh, airheads, totalitarians thinking they're liberal, uh, none so blind as those that are dumber in a box of rocks, want Obama to basically run for a third term. We're going to play that video coming up. Then Darren McBreen has a good comedy piece exposing the war on drugs, but it literally happened. A guy in a Chewbacca suit smoking pot in front of Austin police. Chewbacca smokes pot in front of cops at South by Southwest. That's up on Infowars.com. And then we have the bombshell, earth-shattering news and information. We should probably get this video posted on Infowars.com. Uh, the detailed report from last night's nightly news, military takeover plan reveals... Is your state next? And that ties into the feds saying that Texas and Utah are seen as hostile in their martial law takeover drills that start this summer just south of us in Bastrop, there by the federal prison in Camp Swift, the former German prisoner of war camp. They held the Krauts down there. Oh, political correctness. Oh, so evil. I'm racist against the Germans now. The, the word Kraut doesn't mean Germans are bad. It just means they ate a lot of Kraut called the British Limeys, because 400 years ago, they needed to put limes in their rum so their teeth wouldn't fall out with scurvy. Other people thought it was a weird convention, wouldn't do it. So the British Navy took over the world because their scientists figured out vitamin C before it was called vitamin C. 
But see, now it's just racist. See, it's, it's to end language, end communication. Can't have a brown bag in Seattle. It's racist. Can't, you know, it, it's all this imaginary subconscious stuff. Ignore